you are ready. Okay. Let us start with the, the last talk of the day and actually of the meeting. So Javier Moreno is going to be talking about disk, disks globally max, maximize uh, entanglement entropy in two plus one dimensions. Yeah. Thank you very much for the introduction and for allowing to present in this work that has been done uh, together with Pablo Bueno, Horacio Cassini, and Oscar Lasandino. We put it to uh, uh, some two months ago in, in, in archive and it was recently accepted in JHEP. So the structure of the talk is going to be the following. First, we see an introduction and motivation to present the main conjecture, namely that the disks, uh, uh, the disks like regions uh, maximize entanglement entropy as the title suggests. Then we review some results from the literature that support this claim. Then we study what happens for elliptic regions, uh, for elliptic entangling regions in some theories and more general shapes in the extended mutual information model. And lastly, we study a general proof coming from strong subadditivity property of entanglement entropy. And finally, we provide some conclusions. So the introduction uh, is the following. Consider, uh, if we consider a d-dimensional CFT and we compute the entanglement entropy of, for a smooth entangling region, let's say A, we will find a series of terms that are divergent, non-universal, carrying an ultraviolet uh, regulator and depending on the parity of the dimension, a, a finite term for all dimensional uh, CFTs or a logarithmic divergence for even the uh, dimensional CFTs. Both of them uh, are universal, but their nature is different because the logarithmic the, the coefficient is always a quantity defined on local integrals of A, whereas the, the finite piece has a strong non-local uh, contribution. In the case of D equal three, uh, the previous uh, formula reduces greatly and we end up with only one divergent term, which is always uh, known in the literature as the area law term, and a finite piece that has a, a minus sign, which is here f of a. And this is the one that is universal. Some remarks on this uh, finite piece is that it's conformally invariant. And for instance, whenever you are going to consider regions, uh, some regions, may, if they undergo conformal transformation, they will share the same F. For instance, uh, I put some of the uh, of these figures uh, in the right. All of them should share the, the same F or should be the same, uh, should be anti-entropic from the point of view of the universal contributions. Moreover, when the entangling surface is a disk, then F equals the equal energy, the free energy of the corresponding theory when it's placed on S3. And uh, interestingly, this F0 defines a monotone along RG flow. So this has been exploited to, the, to define an F theorem in, in three dimensions, in three dimensional CFTs. So the main motivation, the conjecture of, the, of this uh, work was what region A should minimize F, uh, F in three dimensions for any given CFT gener generic. The most obvious uh, candidates, the candidate corresponds uh, to the disk. This is that F of A over the free energy is going to be uh, greater or equal than one. Um, and it's only, only going to be one in the case of the disk. So let us review some previous results that support this claim. Uh, the first of them, it comes from a work by Messe uh, in which he considered small perturbations around the disk. He characterized these perturbations with this polar equation uh, as a series, uh, as an expansion of sines and cosines, and the coefficients determine the shape of the perturbation, of course. What he found is that the, at the leading order in epsilon, for general CFTs, what you get is the, the, the piece corresponding to the disk entangling region, plus some uh, corrections starting at epsilon square, uh, 
that are controlled by the flat space stress tensor two point function charge. And of course, the first uh, order in epsilon is absent, uh, representing that this should correspond to an extremum. Or, uh, and in this case, because of the sign of epsilon squared, it should be a local minimum. Other type of regions that are interesting are very are the ones that are very thin. For instance, if one of the dimensions of the or one of the dimensions of the entangling region uh, becomes really, really, really thin, the universal contribution approaches the one corresponding to a strip. Okay, its boundary are two parallel straight lines of length L and separated by a distance R, which are much less than the length of the strip it, in itself. In that situation, F tends to diverge and it carries at a, a very in, uh, an interesting coefficient that is positive and always characteristic of the CFT under consideration. It's not known for uh, a lot of theories. Some of them are, for instance, holographic theories, free scalars and fermions, and the, in the extensive mutual information that I will later on explain uh, what, is, uh, what is it. Uh, so we will restrict ourselves uh, in the future to talk uh, for K in these three uh, in these three theories. And of course, the growing behavior of F for this region shows that the conjecture is clearly satisfied. And regions approaching strip-like shapes will tend to make uh, F grow. For instance, uh, annually. In the uh, in the context of holographic theories, as it has been pointed out uh, before. In the, in the conference, the entanglement entropy can be computed by the Ryu Takayanagi formula, which is the, uh, which relates entanglement entropy with the area of the, the minimal area of, the, of some surface that is a spatial slice of an ADS space time that is homologous and cobordant to the entangling surface. The thing is that for holographic theories dual to Einstein gravity, it can be proven that F is globally minimized when the entangling surface is a disk. How can we do that? We can rely on a quantity coming from uh, the mathematical literature that is called the Wilmore energy. It is defined for smooth orientable class of surface, and it's given by the integral of surface over the mean curvature square of, the sur of, of, of this surface. This quantity has a well-known global lower bound uh, for it, uh, and it is four pi, which is saturated in the case when sigma is a spherical surface. So the point is that it was shown- Sorry, can, that... I, can I ask a question because I'm a little confused? Sure. Um, so F0, you said is conformal invariant. So I can take my, 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 surf, my region and yeah. do a conformal transformation, but then, it... so this globally minimized for a disk is for this in the in a certain conformal class or or this yeah. is the geometric yes, disk? Course. No, it's the the, the the conformal class of the disk. Sure, because all the disks uh, at the end share the same the same conformal well, uh, I, can, I thought that for this and this also showed up today that I I can mess around with with the S one and I can I, I have some degree of freedom like the Schwarzian that people were talking about earlier is a way for me to to map. A disk to another disk in a in a slightly twisted way is is that allowed or not? Uh, but whenever you are doing uh, whenever you are twisting it, you mentioned that in the end you are going to have a, a small perturbation, or it will be again another disk. I think it's well, okay. It's, it's a disk, but with different boundary data. Let's say. Mm. Maybe you're considering in the case of, is this for a thermal state? Because here it's all for pure states. Okay, yeah, maybe, maybe yeah, sorry. Let, let, me, let, me, let me leave this for discussion, sorry. Sure, no problem. Thanks anyway, and uh, feel free to ask uh, any more questions. So what I was uh, saying is that it was shown that the finite term of holographic entanglement entropy in 3D, in three-dimensional CFT, uh, CFTs, can be written in terms of the Wilmore energy as this expression here, where as we require a, a closed surface, we, we, uh, we need to make a double copy of the Ryu Takayanagi surface and then glue them along the entangling surface, uh, the, along the entangling surface. 
So now with this construction, we can take advantage of the bound provided by the Wilmore energy to find a global bound for, half, uh, for, the, for the, the finite piece of entanglement entropy. And we can check uh, indeed that in the case of the disk, it is globally minimized. So the conjecture, we know already that is true for holographic CFT series. Okay. Now let's discuss about uh, other new results regarding, first of all, the elliptic entangling regions, which are the first generalization, the first non trivial after the disk, in our opinion, because uh, it's the first that can uh, pop into your mind. And we're going to parameterize by some eccentricity, E. And for general theories, we are going to know that uh, the following limits apply. Whenever we are going to deal in the case with a small eccentricity, the leading, cor the leading correction is going to be controlled by CT as the message results suggests. And on the other hand, large eccentricity, the large eccentricity limit is going to be characterized by the by the by the strip coefficient because you are going to end up with a very squashed ellipse, very long one. And uh, f, f of e is going to be depending on, on as I say, this k3, the coefficient of the of the strip of the strip. So the point is, if we want to model what happens with the with the with f at all eccentricity, we can try it, we can uh, construct a linear combination of trial functions with particular relative coefficients uh, to model the behavior of the theories that we know. Three fields, holographic theories, and any, for instance. The, the, the trial will be some function that depends on the on these three parameters of the theory, and some internal some coefficients that are going to depend depend on the eccentricity. The, the, the coefficients do not need to be particularly simple, they can depend on complete, uh, complete uh, integrals of, of the of elliptic integrals and so on, and mm, some building blocks. And depending on the series consideration, as I was saying, we pick F0, CT, and K3 accordingly, which are the, 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 the one corresponding to the disk, to the small perturbations, and to the big perturb to the to the case in which it, it's very squashed. We will see later that for the free scalar, this uh, trial function underestimates the expected value. So we are going to propose again a second one to fit this in particular by adding an additional free, para, uh, free parameter. So the exact uh, f of e will be an extremely complicated function depending on, uh, depending on the eccentricity and on many details on the theory. But the, 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 the good thing from, from this trial function is that we can try to parameterize them with only three uh, parameters of each of them. So. We test the precision of our formulas again against numerical calculations for the ME model that we can present later. And uh, we see we show the gray set here that is the exact numerical result for the ME model and the two trial functions, okay, with the uh, with the difference between them co colored in 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 slightly purple. And we can check that the greatest discrepancy between uh, of tri the trials and the and the numerical computation is lower than a five percent, and it's much smaller for most values of the eccentricity, as it suggested here in this small curve here. Of course, as I was saying, the discrepancy for the trial, the second trial function, grows up to a maximum of, of twenty two percent. It's this second one that uh, clearly under, uh, underestimates. But uh, this, uh, this one is not so relevant, as I was saying, it's relevant for then uh, the scalar. So in, the case, in this case, in the scalar, the fermion and the holographic values, we observe this second behavior. We, we compute numerically uh, following two different proce uh, proceedings, procedures to, uh, to find the, the values for certain values of the eccentricity, and then we plot them against the trial function. The trial function second has a better fit with the with the free, with the free scalar, and the trial one a, be, a much better one to the with respect to the uh, with respect to the fermion. And also, a very interesting uh, observation here is that the 
you can clearly see um, a hierarchy of the theories when we are dealing here with the with the with the elliptic and tangent regions, and it's that the f for the scalar is always greater than the f of the fermion and the f of the holographic. Each of them, of course, renormalize over the the disk world. Taking that uh, after doing that uh, in elliptic regions, we can go to ge more general shapes, and we're going to exploit a, a rather simple model that is called the any model. This model is not a theory per se in d equal three dimensions but it satisfies all non-existing axioms for the mutual information of a QFT. So we can use it as a toy model. Besides, it satisfies uh, an additional condition, that is that the mutual, mutual information is extensive, so the tripartite information vanishes. In this model, the entanglement entropy is given by this very easy uh, expression, where these integrals, integrals uh, carry these Rs, uh, these vector positions, pointing to the entangling surface. And we have to make them uh, coincide so that we end up having this uh, area law term that is present in d equal three dimensions. And it's the unit normal vector and kappa three is some, coefficient, some characteristic coefficient that has the ME model and it's positive. So here we can compute the disk-like entangling surface. It's a very easy, a task to do, the, to do so is analytic and uh, we can and we will find two pi square kappa three. But for more complicated regions, we require uh, numerical computations. The first case we're going to study is uh, what happens with when we slightly deformate the disk. And if we do so, we're going to find the same uh, behavior coming from the Messier's uh, descriptions, which can be also matched by plugging just the city uh, coming from any into the Messier's formula. We can compare both, both them for a, for a, for a um, concrete family, for instance, this one, and each of the, of the branches here are different values of L. We plot the blue, uh, squares as the numerical integrations from the of the previous uh, of the previous expression and in red lines are the expressions coming from the from Messe, which are uh, but only but keeping only the second order uh, epsilon square we see that indeed for small epsilon numerics do an excellent job reproducing the exact coefficients in all cases but of course, as L grows, the quadratic approximation becomes worse. So uh, this is not surprising because the subleading pieces uh, should become dominant. We can also go to other, other non-perturbative shapes. We will study uh, two different families. One of them is parameterized by this uh, equation here, one plus A sine square of, of B theta, where B are once dice are, are the, these concrete values. And A is a, running is a running constant that we are going to check different values. Here we plot the, in this cartoon the, the different uh, cases. So this is for B equal one half, this is for B equal one, three halves, two, and five halves. And uh, this running of A will do this kind of figures, okay? These gray figures that are expanding as A uh, increases. In all cases, we plot f of m over the, the, the case of the disk, and we see always that uh, we are getting values that are very close to, to one, but always greater than one, or as a increases, uh, more, ma, ma, much more uh, values, much greater values. Another family that we, that we can parameterize using the uh, eccentricity uh, and b, here again, for different values of these are given these different cartoons, these different figures, and for the running of the eccentricity, we'll do the, the, the gray shapes. Plotting them again, we find exactly the same conclusions. And an additional case uh, checked from B1, the one of the, of the ellipse, is that as the ellipse squashed, it should approach the shape of a strip region, so we can, again, try to match the analytic result, result that we know that is two pi kappa three 
with great precision. Uh, we only find a discrepancy of 0.05% for, for sufficiently large eccentricity. And uh, here are more creative shape, shapes. We don't. Uh, we just. We were just uh, trying different shapes. No, uh, we didn't, I didn't wrote the, the equation for each of them, but in any case, we always uh, check, checked that the same conclusions were uh, applied. That the f of that the f of m over the, the disk is always greater than 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 the one of the disk, which is here at the beginning. So after all this uh, discussion of the non-perturbative uh, shapes, a legitimate question would be if f is expected to satisfy to satisfy an isoperimetric inequality. As we know, the quantity r, which is the perimeter of the of the surface of the region square over four pi area, uh, is satisfied is always greater or equal than one, and it's one for the disk. In the, ME, in the ME model, we check that many cases verify that verify that the R of A is great if R of A is greater than R of B, then F of A is going to be greater than F of B. However, this is not general, and some counterexamples are found among the previous shapes. So the only valid uh, conclusion so far up to now is that the for greater for the great number of shapes we prove we probed, the results. Always point, always point in the same direction. That f for the disk is minimized for the rest of the of the shapes. Okay. Now let's go for for a general proof uh, coming from strong subadditivity property of entanglement entropy. In this section, uh, we're going to do that, and uh, we will we will use that in for a pure state. F satisfies a strong superadditivity relation instead of a strong subadditivity because of the flipping sign that has F over S uh, over the entanglement entropy in D equal three. We have this relation where the where uh, for different for two different regions gamma A and gamma B where gamma A and minus gamma B stands for the relative complement of both. And now we're going to consider a smooth region whose curve has S as the length parameter and a, uh, and a perturbation, such that we can write the perturbation as the original one plus a normal outward vector times a perturbation function, this delta epsilon. We want to study what happens for, with F for the perturbed region. However, as I said previously, F has a local and a non-local part are, uh, and not all perturbation functions will allow an expansion in which we can separate the first order perturbations uh, and the second ones. In order to have this, we will require that the perturbation of, uh, of this type, uh, a perturbation of this type, lambda, uh, lambda to the fourth power times H S over lambda. This way we ensure that F is expandable. Now that we have said uh, that, we have to decide what type of region can provide an F minimum. And because of that, we are going to first consider what happens in the case of non-trivial topology. We can either have regions with more than one connected component in which the F can be, we, we, we will check that, we check that uh, the F is greater or equal uh, than the, the, the ones in the, the, the sum of the individual ones. And on the other hand, if our region has holes, we have also to take into account that the holes have uh, the boundaries. So uh, F gamma will be greater or equal than the one that the F of, the, of, of this region plus the one of the holes. So in either case, F of gamma is greater or equal than some single component uh, region without holes. So we're going to restrict ourselves to that regions, single component simply connected, and we're going to start assuming two regions, gamma tilde and gamma, that uh, are one osculating to another uh, at some point s equal to zero. So osculating meaning that uh, one, you can inscribe one within the another. The forming these regions with a suitable perturbation function and studying the previous expansion from superadditivity, strong superadditivity, we are going to find that the at first order, 
uh, well, we are going to find this relation of a uh, of one gamma minus a of gamma tilde uh, is always greater than zero. In words, this means that to first, to first order, f for the larger region increases more than for the smaller one for a deformation going outwards at the point of osculation. Now, for the disk region and an Euclidean invariant f, the coefficient of the disk, uh, the coefficient a of the disk uh, is going to be zero, and this can be deduced from scaling a disk and taking the first order variation uh, and imposing that uh, it has, must be independent of, of s, it must be constant. Uh, on the other hand, every, every region has a local maximum and a local minimum of curvature. If it's a smooth and a lot of con uh, all these conditions are satisfied. And for each of them, we're going to find an inner osculating circle and an outer osculating circle respectively. So for, for instance, you can see it here in this, uh, in this uh, plot, the point of maximum curvature, which is here, it has an inner uh, osculating circle. And in the point of, of uh, minimum, so, uh, curvature it has a it could in, you could inscribe it in a greater circle so from the previous relation we can derive that at the curvature maximum a1 is going to be greater or equal to, to zero and at the curvature minimum is, is going to be the opposite uh, uh, smaller or uh, smaller than zero now we can perturb the region to increase the size of the minimum or decrease the size of the maximum and after doing that we can use again the previous expansion for this preservation to uh, uncheck that f has always decreased in this uh, in this step. So we can repeat the process until there is no maximum or minima in the curvature, arriving to a disk, and then always go, uh, having gone to uh, in, in in decreasing f. So uh, the conclusion the conclusions are the following: we have shown that for two plus one uh, dimensional CFTs, the claim f of a over f0 is always greater or equal than, than one, and it's one for the disk in the following contexts. First, for elliptic uh, regions, for holographic uh, in the extended motor information and in, for free field series in both limits, when the eccentricity tends to, 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 to zero and when the eccentricity uh, tends to one. Within the EMI model, we have first, uh, studied the perturbative results recovering the expression of Messe, and we have studied also more general shapes. Uh, then a uh, general proof coming from strong superadditivity of F and using osculating circles for single components simply connected as both regions. Moreover, a nice discussion uh, that comes from here is that for regions with non-trivial topology, the bound can be improved. For regions with, for instance, n disconnected subregions, each of one having mj holes, the, the bound could read like this, f is greater than f0 times nb, where nb is the number of boundaries. And this can follow from, apply, from applying repeat, uh, repeatedly f greater or equal to, to f0 to all each single component simply connected piece. So that would be all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Javier, for the presentation. So, yeah, there is a few minutes uh, for questions, so 